What's up, Barefoot Nation? This week, I'm going to show you how to have a low maintenance fish tank. They kind of exist. Let's go. All right, guys. So this is my 33 gallon long um, fish tank. So now you can say that this tank has been operational or up and running since 2019. However, uh, when I moved into my new house, I did disassemble it, not the tank, but the, the all the, you know, tank stuff. I did rip out all the plants and reassemble it at my new house. Um, now, and move all the fish and all that, and that could be its own separate video, but obviously it's already done, and it's been done, so. The rule is with fish tanks is that you're supposed to do water changes once a week, about 25%. None of us have time to do that. And if you do, you know, God bless you. But for the rest of us, uh, the best thing that you can do to keep your fish tank clean and healthy, um, well, there's a bunch of things actually. I end up doing water changes kind of depending on how frequently my plants need water. Um, and that's a whole separate issue as well. Uh, the plants, my house plants absolutely love the water from the fish tank because of the diluted nutrients and also because of the beneficial bacteria that's in abundance. So this is a community fish tank. So all of these fish are peaceful schooling fish. There's none in here for the most part that um, are super aggressive and will pick on each other um, except actually for that guy you just saw go yeah so this guy right here that's a Siamese algae eater, and he's the biggest bully in the tank. He's also the biggest fish in the tank. But uh, for now, the Danios hopefully should grow. But um, that's actually going to dovetail nicely into the maintenance of the tank. Now let's get a little bit closer and look at it. So that little guy right there you can see is called a Corydoras, or Cory catfish. And Cory cats are great because they are part of what's called a cleanup crew. It's considered a detritivore, so basically what this guy's gonna do is he's going to go use the little barbells that you can't really see. Let me see if I can find his buddy. So now what you can see this guy doing, and this is basically, I did not do a water change before this video, um, just so that you guys can kind of get a realistic expectation. Um, but you can see all of this stuff right here. This is all detritus that needs to get sucked up, whether it's broken down fish food, fish poo, or whatever. Um, what this guy's gonna do, what these Cory cats do, you can see him right there, is he's actually sifting through all that stuff, kicking it up into back into the current, and, um, and he's looking for food. And so current is another important element to having a lower maintenance fish tank but again it's like that's not a guarantee um, I have two of these Cory cats because when I was at the fish store my local fish store and, and bought them they seemed to um, be kind of schooling types almost or they seemed to kind of enjoy each other's company so um, unfortunately I forgot what type of Cory cat this guy is I think it starts with a B like Blomans or something um, but yeah, so, and one of the reasons that I, I actually haven't had these guys for that terribly long because I find most of the patterns on the Cory Cats boring and I think part of having a fish tank, part of the enjoyment is having fish that you like and that are beautiful, such as the Neon and Cardinal Tetras. No, this fish is part of the cleanup crew. He is stressed out. Can you guys tell? He doesn't like the iPad, maybe. Maybe he does like the iPad. I don't know. <laughs> so even though... So the cleanup crew comprises of fish, and that's going to... That's going to take away from the number of fish that you can have in your tank. So this tank is a 33 gallon, as I mentioned, and so... You can, ge the general rule is, and again, if you watched my video about how to keep your pond crystal clear, the number one comment is, oh my gosh, you have so many more fish than what the rule allows for. A pond is going to be a lot more flexible with the fish load than a fish tank because hopefully you're not getting rain inside your house. Um, 
So when you're talking about stocking a fish tank, what you're gonna want to keep in mind is that the number of gallons of the tank is going to kind of handcuff how many fish you can actually have in the tank. So the smaller the tank, the less fish you can have. Basically, it's that simple. And generally speaking, the rule of thumb is one inch of fish per gallon of water. So now, in this tank, I actually have it stocked at kind of a medium rate. So it's not, um, so like were you to not do water changes for a month or so, which is generally the uh, duration between my water changes, a couple weeks to a month, uh, were you to not do water changes, um, the fish, the level of toxins and fish poo and stuff is not going to go out of control. That's one of the reasons that I like the community fish, like the Neon Tetras because, and the Danios, is not only are they simple and they're tough fish, but they stay pretty small, so you can have a lot of them in a tank and have it look pretty awesome. I also tend to like the planted tanks, big shocker there. Although, the cichlids are starting to grow on me. So I kind of went off on a tangent a little bit about stocking fish. Uh, I was talking about a cleanup crew, and basically that is, um, just to sum it up, it's just species of fish that uh, will eat detritus on the bottom of the tank, like um, the quarry cats, who are going to kind of sift through some of the waste. There's algae eaters, which I think, <clears throat> which I think the algae eaters are kind of a scam. Like I've tried Otto Sinclus, I've tried Placostomus, the small types, I've tried Siamese algae eaters, and they all are kind of just okay. Like you can see on the rocks here. So let's talk about algae. That's kind of the number one enemy in a fish tank. The reality is, guys, it doesn't matter how many Placostomus you have in a fish tank. Okay, maybe that's not exactly true. But, like, you can't have like a full species Placostomus, that big brown fish, you know, in a tank with all the tetras. Partially, too, because Placostomus will eat tetras. So you have a big honkin' pleco in the tank, he's gonna eat those colorful fish that you paid a lot of money for once that pleco gets big, which happens quickly. So, but I mean, back to the algae eater thing, I've tried all the algae eaters. I've tried Otto Sinclus, I've tried, I still have a Siamese algae eater. He was better uh, when he was younger. I don't know if it's a he, <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I've tried all the algae eaters, all right, I guess technically I, I don't know of every single algae-eating community fish that there is, but I've tried all the common ones, as I've mentioned. It doesn't, they only do so well. You know? At the end of the day, the best algae eater is going to be one of these guys here. This is a mag float. This is not endorsed. Um, but mag float, basically what it is, is it's this magnetic thing that you kind of just drag along the sides, and the fish hate it when you do it. But, you know, this is a decorative fish tank, you know, so it's got to be done. But so this thing, you just kind of drag it along the side. I like to do it in a circular pattern. I think it works best. Um, although I have had, um, in a previous fish tank, I have had these things, um, the algae grow in a certain way that it wouldn't remove that algae. Um, and that, um, in that case, you're going to need, like, um, in that case, you're going to need some kind of brush, which is basically going to um, scrub the algae off. Algae is probably the number one enemy in a fish tank, but the other thing you can do, having good quality lights. So having good quality lights is something that, you, another thing you can do in addition to the mag float, little magnet algae scrubber, uh, is something you can do to cut down on algae. Algae, just like with your pond, how they sell that corny blue dye, uh, which again is only so effective in full sun, uh, reducing the amount of light, of blue light, that you have in your tank is one way to have better uh, fish tank, or better success reducing algae. Another thing too is having lights on a timer is super simple. It's like, you know, just one less thing that you have to do. And then I am really into having a high quality light. This is, by all in, for all intents and purposes, what's considered a low tech tank. There is no CO2, there is no dosing of nutrients, there is nothing 
except there's no nutrition being added to the tank except what the fish uh, poo out <laughs> and also any uh, fish food that doesn't get eaten and decomposes. It's, it's all basically just that. I think that the best thing, the best way for you to have a beautiful fish tank and minimize your algae is to have your, your lights on a timer and these lights come on at about 1 p.m. and they shut off at about 10 p.m. So these lights are on for about nine hours, which is kind of a long day for the plants. So the lights are on for nine hours, basically on a schedule that's going to optimize the tank view. And the way that I do that is I do have a fancy light. I have a Fluval Aqua Sky, I think it's called. And um, that light was $120 or something at the time that I bought it a couple years ago. Actually, it was a Christmas present. Um, so there's a good way to get stuff for your tank. You can see right here, this filter is a Fluval C4. Um, I've had that filter running, oh my gosh, easily for 10 years. So when you're talking about filtration, I personally am a fan of the hang on the back types because they're a pretty simple mechanism and they, they're, for the most part, because they're simple, they're gonna last a long time. Again, I've had this Fluval C4 for a long time and the only, um, <clears throat> replacement part that you have to do for the filter itself besides the media occasionally that's probably overhyped too is inside this little pump is the impeller and the impeller rod and because that filter runs 24 7 365 uh, the impeller rod actually will <clears throat> will kind of wither itself away into kind of an hourglass shape and you know when it's time to replace the impeller rod because the, uh, the filter will be noisy. So instead of hearing just a nice sound of trickling water, you're actually gonna hear like a rattling and like it's gonna sound almost like there's air stuck in the tube or something. So, so this filter has been great. And I mean, I could do a separate review on it. Um, here in uh, Western New York, I have very hard water. So you can see there's all sorts of calcifications on there and on the, the back of the tank. If you look inside the filter, I'm not going to fully take it apart, but right here, this is going to be your filter pad, and that's, um, I replace that very, very rarely. Generally, just a good strong ring out in the sink is going to, um, is going to be good enough. Underneath here with this little aeration thing, this is your beneficial bacteria. Um, area here and you can see that these guys these whatever you call those little concrete things or they're not concrete but whatever you call those things they've been running they've been in use basically since 2015 because I had a separate fish tank with the same filter and so these things have they are freaking cycled man you hear people say that you can't wring this out in, with tap water, with chlorinated water. <clears throat> I haven't had issues with it. Underneath the beneficial bacteria, um, I actually guess I will take the filter apart fully. Underneath that, underneath that you can't really see it, but there's basically just a little thing of um, activated carbon. And that's just... Uh, gonna do what activated carbon does, taking impurities out of the water. And it's a really simple um, filter. The only criticism I guess I have since I'm talking about it is this thing is supposed to be a little, um, there's supposed to be a little red stick that pops up. No other way to describe it. Um, there's supposed to be a little red stick that pops up when you're supposed to maintain it um, based on like water pressure or something, that doesn't work. The way that I know that the filter needs maintenance is you'll see water coming, it'll basically the water will be overflowing out this side too, in addition to the, the actual weir where it's supposed to be flowing out of. I got sidetracked about the beneficial bacteria. Um, this whole chamber, whenever I clean the filter, you saw me pull that out a couple seconds ago. I never, ever, ever get tap water on this. Um, for the duration of the filter maintenance, it's fine to have this area dry. It's actually, I think one of the reasons this filter is so great is because it's in that kind of wet, dry, humid, damp 
but still oxygenated environment. So yeah, again, it's um, it's a very simple filter, but it seems to work really well. Well, this is a fine filter mat, and I've seen people say it's not necessary. Uh, if you know, you know. Um, this actually does a decent job at taking out the finest of particles. Um, again, when it's maintained properly and it's not overflowing, you don't need to replace it as often as they say. The last thing I'll say about this filter is you'll notice here on the lid, this little, um, this little cell service bar, for lack of a better term. Uh, basically, that's just flow rate. I always keep this on full flow because for your tank, it's having good oxygenation and circulation, just like with a pond, is really important. As you saw earlier with the Cory Cats swimming against the against the current, it also keeps the fish healthier. I, I think that it's, you know, exercise is good for all of us, you know? The other super important component to a successful fish tank is having a good heater. Now, a good heater that'll last a long time doesn't exist. They all suck. Uh, drop drop it in the comments if you have a heater that you've had for more than like two years. Um, but that's... I, <laughs> I don't think they exist. This heater here you see is just a PetSmart special. Um, I actually bought it not that long ago in uh, spring. You know, so far it's holding up. You can kind of touch the glass and see that it's keeping the water warm. Again, I mentioned that I don't have CO2 or any sort of dosing whatsoever, uh, but the again, the strong flow from the filter and the bubbles putting in the, the CO2 from the air, I think is really helpful. If you look carefully in the tank, you can see all these tiny, tiny bubbles which don't even penetrate the water's surface. And those bubbles are gonna be super helpful for keeping the tank well oxygenated. So the other thing you might notice about my tank is, uh, is the wood. So you might also notice, uh, I would hope, this big gnarled thing here. This is actually a Monstera Deliciosa cutting, which is rooting in the tank. And um, I actually might leave it, uh, if you saw my video, my houseplant tour, part one, still haven't posted part two. Um, but if you saw my houseplant tour, I... I actually really like how that Monstera looks, even though it's kind of doesn't really know where the sun is, um, in the sense that the leaves aren't all facing one direction. But I actually really like how that looks both underwater and above water. So the Monstera might actually, might actually stay in the fish tank. And saving the best for last, if you guys are still watching, you're awesome. Uh, Talking about the fish that I have, I mentioned early in the video that it's a community tank. Um, I like to keep it simple, you know, so I've got a bunch of different type of Danios. These ones here that you're looking at, that when the light hits them just right, they're gorgeous. They're pearl Danios, so they kind of have some of the similar patterns of the zebra Danios. You can see a long fin zebra Danio right there. Or I guess rather the Pearl Danios do have kind of a bluish cast to them in the right lighting. Um, that's a new addition. One of my favorite fish that I just can't keep alive, but they're stunning, are Furcata Rainbow Fish. Um, which is like kind of the same shape almost as a Dania, but they've got yellow and red and blue. They're just beautiful. And then of course, I don't think it would be a community tank without having some Tetras. You can see here... Um, there is a cardinal tetra, so I've got a couple cardinals, and then also two, um, some just old school neons. And then I also have these green, eh. I also have a bunch of, a couple green neon tetras, and you can see that they kind of have a, um, kind of the blue stripe of a cardinal, but they don't really have much red at all. And they stay a little bit smaller, they were supposed to stay a little bit smaller than your typical other tetras, but um, yeah, the greens are cool. The green neons are cool, and then also too, you can see, and then you may or may not be able to see again the cor um, blomins or whatever cory cats that are in that corner t over there. They like to hang out together, which is cool. Um, and the fish that I probably will end up feeding to my turtle if I can catch it, Siamese algae eater here. Um, I'm just not a fan of the Siamese algae eater. 
And as you might have noticed, uh, these community fish really do kind of get to know you and they do kind of come to the edge. They're begging for food, of course, you know, but um, for the most boring part of the video, but probably one of the more useful parts is uh, what I keep under the fish tank. And I have all sorts of water test kits, um, which I rarely use, but I have them should I need them. Um, I have the packaging and the old impeller rod. I've got some spare filter pads for the Fluval C4, um, which again, I, I've had these, This there's probably dust on this package because I don't change the filters that often. I just clean them occasionally. And then of course, the obligatory stress coat and stress zyme for doing water changes. Stress coat is your dechlorinator. Stress zyme is beneficial bacteria to top off your um, existing uh, colony of beneficial bacteria. Uh, the stress zyme, there's a bit of a debate because uh, some people think that the populations should just breed themselves, but if you guys have had a pond with an automatic dosing system, that has pretty dang good water quality. So I'm a fan of dosing more beneficial bacteria into the tank when you do water changes, especially because when you're doing a water change, the water that you're putting back in from the tap after you've dechlorinated likely will not, um, well, no, it won't. It won't have the levels of beneficial bacteria in the water that you took out. So that's a pretty simple reason for why I use it. Of course, I got my fish food. And CO2 booster, again, I don't use any of these products. I have them, um, and uh, but I don't use them because I don't think you need them. This little radio looking thing might be one of the most important pieces of kit you can have for your fish tank because if your power goes out, this is a battery operated aerator. This is something that you, you know, you don't need it until you freaking need it. And then when you freaking need it, you know, you'll pay a hundred dollars for it. What? And I mean, literally it's just a super simple aerator, just like the rest of them. That actually went a lot longer than I was expecting. So if you watch to the end, to this point, you guys are awesome. And hopefully your fish tank will be uh, amazing. If you want to see more content just like this, be sure to smash that subscribe button and tap the bell. YouTube says that over 50% of my viewers are not subscribed. So what are you waiting for? And if you do like this video, be sure to give it a big ol' thumbs up. And if you thought my information sucked, give it a thumbs down. Let me know. Give me some hate. Don't do that. Alright guys, thanks for watching. See you next week.